I'm not pushing you. You are pushing me. Don't take your reaction on me. I'm going to put your mic down. Put the mic down. Bring your mic down. Bring your mic down. Thank you very much. The man came up from here. But he was a dancer for the first of the first of the And on a condition, part of which we are challenging before the sport of the game. So, I know that it's in prison. No detention for one year. They cannot hold us in detention for almost one year until now. Please tell us what to bring him to us. He has family. He has family. He has children that he's training in school. The children are not being in school since one year until now. Four kids like that. I give a tell me sorry. I need his dead body. Let me go and bury him where? Let me go and bury him where? Yes. Don't you don't want to see the? You want to know? I'm not there. I'm not there. But I mean, the situation now is that everybody is confused. Nobody, the government is saying there is no. But it's clear that everybody saw the army invaded his house. There's nobody should be confused. The truth of the matter that the Nigerian army invaded his house and there's a shooting and the whole world see it. So don't say that we're confused. We're not confused. You know the truth. Let the world know the truth. No, I don't want to say anything. I'm self I need my husband. What are they? Four years now. Give me the detention. Bring him out of court for two charges. Whatever you do, I'm not going to That is his name. Nigeria and me. Nigeria and me are dead today. What is it? They went to the party side. He threw my hand. Give him a rest. This one year and dinner, not even bring him to court. Or judge me if he kills someone or whatever he committed. He needs to be judged. Yes. This is the last year. Last year, August, I've not seen my husband with my two eyes with the kids. Kids, four kids, and they are sick every day looking for their father. This is it for me. Brad, yeah, this is the kind of thing for one year. Yes. Yes. What do you say his name is? Yes. Huh? They will judge him at you. They said that he should, the, the judges say he should be released with it for five hours. They say he should be released with it for five hours. He's dead. They have not bring him out. What's your husband's name? Huh? Sorry. What's your husband's name? Right, Chimese. I, I, I the brother out. Yes. So can you tell us what really happened here? I don't think about it. The Nigeria DSS arrested him and charged him to court. And the court, in their own wisdom, said he has no case to answer and the, the, the DSS said they should release him. Since then, they refused. And they are arresting since over one year plus. They are, they, 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 they are from the In fact, the evidence that they, they, they have killed him. They have killed him. The DSS have killed him and they refuse to give him. No problem. I just want to see his dead body so that I can bury him well. He has family. He has kids. He has four children. So, and there's no basis in law, whatsoever and fact, under why that application should be granted, based on those, 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 uh, those, those, those evidence, those, those documents. Because we have features of terrorism groups, which clearly put under the understand law, and those features are not present in the activities of IPOM. So we are coming back here on 23rd of November to argue that motion. So, uh, October to argue that motion. Thank you very much. We draw his lawyer. His counsel's case. Where is the other guy? Let me find your job. Shino. Shino. All right, so counsel to. Ma'am, the counsel. Let's stand together so that then maybe the Honorable Minister will speak after I've spoken. Um, well, I am here in to show complete solidarity with a friend and brother that I met and that I got to know very, very well. I refuse to accept the allegations that are leveled against him. I refuse to believe that he's a terrorist. I don't believe that. He has never killed anybody. He has never threatened the existence of the Nigerian state. He has simply expressed a view um, for self-determination, which I think is the right of every Nigerian. Whether we agree with that view or not, he has the right to state it. What concerns me and why I came here today was simply because it's very clear to me that something must have happened to him. If it is that he's in the custody of the military, then they should let us know and then they should produce him. And of course, if he's alive, they should produce him hale and hearty. If he's not alive, they should at least, at least let us have his body if he's not alive.
I don't know what the situation is, but I'm deeply concerned as a Nigerian, as a person of compassion, and as a person that believes that everybody has the right to express his views in this country, as long as they are not breaking the law or killing people. This government has refused to label those that killed 40 people in Joss yesterday as terrorists. They've refused to do that. That is the husband. And yet, they now label IPOB as a terrorist organization. The IPOB that has never killed anybody, as far as I'm aware, or has ever burnt anybody's home or used violence or carried arms. And I think that's a contradiction which we should all be a little bit concerned about. However, having said all that, everything is before the courts. Let it be determined. But in order for him to be prosecuted effectively and for him to present his own defense, for goodness sake, I call on the Nigerian military to stop this charade. And if he's with you, let us know. Give him back to us so that he can be produced before the court. And if you know you've killed him, for goodness sake, give us his body. That's all. As a friend and as a brother, I have a duty to do that. Despite whatever threats we may be facing as a consequence of standing, I will never, ever not stand with a friend and a brother, even in his time of need. And I pray for Anamdi Kanu. I pray for his family and all those that are with him. Let me also say one more thing. The idea or the, the allegation that 28 people were slaughtered in his home when the military got there is something that is shocking and acceptable. I gather the cooks, the houseboys, I gather that some of their guests, some of their workers, even the dogs were butchered and killed. I gather the cars were burnt and the whole house and the whole palace was sprayed with bullets. This is unacceptable behavior. Now, this is the information I have received. And I haven't seen our friends since that time. And I say shame on those that may not even know Namdi Kanu, that will hear of these very serious allegations and sit on the fence and say nothing. We are men of courage. We are Nigerians. And we should be able to rise to the occasion when somebody's rights are violated in this way and people are murdered in their homes. They produce pictures. And yet the government acts as if it never happened. I say shame on them and I say that it's time for us to stand up and stand up for even the weakest in our society and ensure that even they get justice. So that's why I'm here today. Thank you, sir. Can we also get your reaction? Well, um, I was in court the day he was granted bail, Nandi Kanu was granted bail and um, I stand for justice, I stand for fairness, I stand for the due process of the law. I believe in the law, and I believe the law must be allowed to take its course. Therefore, I ask the National Assembly to once again rise to its duties, rise to their responsibility of auditing what transpired during Operation Python Dance. The President deploys the military to quell acts of insurrection. I do not believe there was any act of insurrection in the Southeast. But having done that, the National Assembly should please audit what happened. And all right-thinking men in Nigeria should stand up to say that our laws must be respected. Our laws must be obeyed. We must follow the due process of the law. That's what I stand for. And I believe very firmly that if we follow the process of the law, if we do what is right for the law, for, the, for Nigeria, then the Nigerian military will henceforth call off Operation Python Dance. Operation Python Dance has displaced the trust the Nigerians have for the military. Children ran away from school because they heard the military were vaccinating people. It shows you the level that the Nigerians feel about those who have been paid to protect them. I think the time has come for the government to return to law-governed processes. And I call on the National Assembly to rise to his responsibility and tell us what happened. Let us know the truth of what has transpired. Let us know if the military took Nam the Kami away from his house. Let us know what the fact from the fiction. And when we do know that, I believe if we return to the process of the law, if we follow the process of the law, this country, have, we have united and have agreed to support democracy. The reason why we did that, the reason why we went to the barricades to fight the military regimes, to fight the Abacha regime, was because we wanted a free country where we'll be right to express ourselves. And I believe that Nigeria will fundamentally work for all of us if we have a country where no man is oppressed. So I stand here today to say we want the National Assembly to audit what happened during Operation Python Dance. Sir, can you quickly react to the uh, shorty uh, forfeited and billboard up on this number? 
the shorties will come to court to deal, to deal with that. They will definitely be here. Thank you very much. Uh, please, uh, uh, just a man of the square. It's okay. My name is Edio Hajjan. I'm a brother to Bright Chimese Ishiwa. I travel all the way from Portacourt to Abuja here this morning to witness the proceedings of my brother. And among the four people that was detained with him. Okay. So I have not seen him among the four people that we are detained. He is missing. Please, I'm using this opportunity now and also the, uh, this media to beg Nigerians to produce him, whether dead or alive. My name is Orion Jones. I'm the counsel to, to Chimezie, Bright Chimezie is talked about. Yes, the, the prosecution filed amended information that they were supposed to bring to the government. Well, actually, the matter is supposed to be coming up here today. So, but uh, the, the, the proceeding couldn't proceed. Go on because of the fact that there's access in court. So, uh, it's a matter of common knowledge that the military embedded his premises on the 14th day of September 2017 and the uh, murdered about 28 persons there and wounded many, which is now in the public domain. So, uh, the world were asking for us nothing but for the military to produce them. And uh, we have gone a step further by filing an application before the courts to compel the chief army staff to produce them before the court. Uh, so that the trial can go. So, and the, that suit is coming up on the on the second day of November, 2017, for hearing. So, and the court was informed about his absence, uh, though he actually, in line with the practice, asked the shorty to come and explain more. So, and we are hopeful that before the November 20th, the court must have had our application, substantive suit, when we are asking for it of habeas corpus, compelling the military to produce before the court and uh, make a decision one way or the other. So you believe that he's in the custody of the military? Certainly, certainly. You know, I spoke last with him, surely before they entered again and tried to his house. And uh, that was my last con conversation with him. Uh, I've not been able to establish any form of contact with him again. So, and uh, uh, the, 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 the killed 28 persons, arrested many. There, yeah, so they should be in a position to tell us where he is. Because uh, he was in the house when they, get, when they got there. Thank you. But some reports are saying that he has traveled abroad. How can he travel abroad? These are, these are people that barricaded the entire premises at the point they get entrance. How can he travel? They know where he is. I'm telling you, that, that, that was why, that was actually informed our suit before this court. Because it's not a case of accusing them orally. We have gone further than that. I told the Shubham Mr. let him be on oath. Let him file a response to what to file in court here. Let him be on oath and tell us he's not in their custody. Then we'll give it before the court. So thank God the day has been given to that effect. So In the court, you made a strong statement. But, you don't know whether he is alive or dead. Very well, they are told the court, of course. I don't know, because I, I spoke last week, we seen last of of September. That was last, last time I had communication with him. I don't know whether my client is alive or dead. And what we are praying is simple. If, it's, if they've killed him, let them let them have very lofty of his corpse. So they can give him a fitting better. He's a prince. That have been said in many occasions. He's a prince. Then if he's alive, let them produce him before this court. Let me say this to you people. Under Section 173, 2 sub B of the ACJA, there are no, there's no law that says that if in the course of Nam they can enjoy his bail granted, bail granted him by the court, that he cannot be arrested on account of any other offense committed. There's no law that says that. They can even, this court can even make an order that he should be arrested upon appearing in this court. So why going to his house on that, on that, on that 14th of September if they have a genuine intention? If the intention was not to go and kill him? That's all my question. Thank you. They know the matter turned up today for hearing. They were waiting for him to come to court on, on, on 17th and simply pick him up. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Thank you so You're welcome. Much. Thank you. We'll we speak later. Thank you. Okay. 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 Okay.